The Dental Brief is brought to you by Omni Premier Marketing and the amazing guests who bring wisdom and advice that you can put to use to take your business and practices to the next level. Find us on Facebook and join the conversation. Get ready to grow because we are kicking off the next episode in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. I'm so excited to have with us on the program today, the review doctor. I'm going to jump right in at Dr. Lendhal. Say hello to everyone. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm excited to spend the next uh, 15 minutes or so uh, talking about things related to reviews and um, how I help practices out there. Yeah. And, you know, what we're literally going to be talking about is building your dental practice, right? So that's where this connected. I, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to kind of jump in right here and, and talk about something. I'm watching a TV show with my wife. I don't know when it came out. It was called Dope Sick. It's about the pharmaceutical industry. And one, um, and it's about Oxycontin and, and basically what happened there. And one of the things that they talk about on the program and one of the things that my wife um, deals with in urgent care, and I know dentists deal with it, um, are patients that are driving a big part of care through uh, basically – non-verbal threats of leaving negative reviews for that provider, right? So a lot of people were, hey, give me the drugs or I'm leaving a negative review or, or that's the fear that uh, physicians had and, and um, dentists uh, have. So I think this is a huge topic and I think it's really important. I think it's, it's so important. Tell me, when it comes to reviews, what are a lot of dentists talking to you about when they see you at an event, uh, when they find your website, uh, what are some things they're saying to you? The most common question I get is, is how to generate more reviews, which is a struggle for them, or how to deal with bad reviews, which I think is probably the most common thing that I get um, is really, how do I, what do I do when I get a bad review? Or as people tell me, oh my God, I get, got a bad review. What do I do? Is really what they say to me. Yeah. Which, you know, obviously is a hot topic on social media. I see it every, almost every day there. And I see responses talk about that negative review. I see responses from other dentists saying, Hey, you know what, tell them to go somewhere else or tell them when, you know, their tooth falls out of their mouth because they didn't take your advice that that's on them. And they're being serious about responding to reviews in that kind of way. And of course, this is not something that we can do. What I, what I want to jump to is talk about HIPAA a little bit. So since we're going to talk about reviews, what does HIPAA say about leaving online reviews. There's a lot of myths, a lot of untruths out there. So give it to us straight. What's the, what's HIPAA and, and reviews look like? So you can respond to an online review. Um, HIPAA does not prevent you from doing that. What HIPAA prevents you from do is releasing any privately, uh, private information about that interaction with the patient. So um, you can use generics. Um, you cannot technically acknowledge them as a patient. So that's the first thing. Um, in my opinion, if you thank a patient for writing a positive review um, and you thank them for, if they say, hey, I had a, an implant done at the office and I love, I, I love the result, you can say, we're so glad you love the implant we placed. Um, that is technically a HIPAA violation by the letter of the law. But someone who you wrote a positive or someone who wrote a positive review for you is not going to worry about that. It's the issue when it comes to the negative reviews and what you can and can't say because dentists have gotten into trouble for their responses. So um, it should be very generic, generic responses, policies in the office. You know, I, I got charged $50 uh, because I didn't come to 25 appointments. Uh, you know, office policy states, you know, you know, sorry you had this experience, office policy states, um, after five no-shows, we charge $50. Um, please call the office to discuss your concerns that unfortunately I'm, I'm not able to answer further due to HIPAA. Yeah. So you can state things, but it has to be in gen generics of office policies. You cannot really state that you did anything to the patient in the office. It's just not allowed. Sure. That makes sense. So what about when, um, what, how about, how about handling a review when it's in a pediatric, um, office when the actual patient wasn't the, the person, um, that left the review. And, and I think we know this, that, uh, moms and dads can tend to be helicopters and want the very best for their patient. But how do you, how do you recommend they, they handle those types of reviews? I would handle the same way. Look, in my opinion, the best response to a negative review is more positive, simple. Yeah. Um, I don't like responding to negative reviews um, unless you know the patient is not crazy because what you can do is when you respond to a review, 
it gives the person who wrote the review the ability to re-respond. And you can actually make matters worse online um, by poking the bear, as I like to say, and I don't like to poke the bear. So I generally recommend you don't respond. Uh, um, I recommend you reach out to the patients over online or over the phone, email, and do not put it in a public forum. That's the recommendation I've always given. Um, there are, are instances where you feel like you need to respond. But remember, when you're responding to a negative review, you're not responding to the person who wrote the review. You're responding to the people who are reading the reviews. And that's really what it comes to. Um, so you need to be careful in what you do there. Um, but, you know, I would do it the same way. If it's a parent of a child, the child's not writing the review. I would use the same tactics to respond to that if you want to respond online <laughs> or, or contact the patient offline um, and re try to fix their concern. That's how I like to handle those situations. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense to me. I think as a, reviews, even negative reviews, can be an awesome opportunity to market your practice. Right? What about responding to positive reviews? Do you recommend responding to all those? Look, there's, I don't think, I had not found a direct correlation um, other than the fact if someone says they love their dental implant in the review, if you put the word dental implant in the response, there is some keyword um, bonus there. But I haven't found anything else that Google wants you to respond to reviews. So unless you can come up with a like a unique response to all reviews, you do not want to put the same thing each time. I think it looks canned and stupid. Um, I don't think you need to respond to every single review. You know, once every five or ten reviews, I think it's fine. Um, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm not a big fan of, of responding to reviews because I think it opens it up to too many potential concerns online. Um, so I always recommend taking it offline and doing it that way. Um, for positives, feel free to respond. It just, you really can't have any problems doing that. Yeah, and and there is definitely some value. I've seen it, some value to um, adding specific keywords, um, you know, high volume keywords to your responses, right? This is exactly why I opened my dental practice up here in Denver, Colorado, right? So, um, right, you're kind of sneaking it in um, like that. But of course, revert back to the beginning of this, talk about HIPAA, you nor I um, are endorsing ever using any PMI, any protected healthcare information of patients. Don't even acknowledge that they had a service there. Um, certainly acknowledge that you're happy that they like your business. Um, I think that's good. Yeah, enough. I, I think that would be the, the, the main thing to take away from it. Um, yeah. You know, use caution. Um, if you have a concern, um, I would urge you not to respond. Yeah. So, so, um, in my Facebook group, one of the doctors posted a, a crazy one-star review they got. And the review basically said, I, I've never been to the office. I wanted to go there, but I was disappointed to learn that they do not take my insurance. Having six children, it's imperative that I find a practice that, that accepts my insurance plan. Yep. And the doctor it was like, oh, my God, I can't believe you got this one-star review. But I think that's actually good for business. It turns people away that you wouldn't want as patients. So not all negative reviews are bad for business, in my opinion. I would agree with you. And then also, I think some negative reviews, there's some negative reviews that I, I read and I'm like, oh, geez, I, the doctor or the team did a terrible job there. Like, I, I literally see that. You can read, you can see the truth in the reviews, but then you can also see reviews that are nuts, right? Where the person literally, and I don't mean to, you know, that's probably not a nice thing to say here in 2023, but, you know, I, for instance, my company for the longest time, our only negative review was from the boyfriend of an ex-employee. That was our only negative review, right? And when you read the review, you go, this person is out of line. This isn't reasonable. And that doesn't necessarily hurt you. Would you agree with that? I agree with you. Correct. Yeah. Some some bad reviews are good for business, like I said. So yeah. um, I just think you need to, you know, I always say, if you do get a bad review, relax, count to 20, um, because you do not want to respond in a way that's going to hurt you online. Negative reviews yeah. suck. They suck for business, but not all yeah. of them have to ruin your life. They're, you're all going to recover. It's not the end of the world. The best defense, like I said many times, is to um, just generate more positive reviews. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, and when you said they suck, they really do. I, I, I recommend, you know, sometimes wait a couple of days, right? These these reviews, I don't think, I don't think anything has kept my clients up more than a negative review. I mean, I, I have a client right now that got a, a negative review a year ago that was clearly from not even this country. And it was, you know, the one star review from one person with, you know, a, 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 a name where they're clearly not from the United States. And this just 
can't just rattles the heck out of them. So how do you deal with that? Let's talk about you're you're a doctor, right? Um, you you practice for a long time um, in a in a in an area where people are very demanding. Um, how did you handle when you got negative review? How do you not let that get to you emotionally? So. You know, I always like to say I, I was a New Yorker. I practiced in Philadelphia for 23 years, 15 on my own. And a lot of the bad reviews I had gotten were because of my rules and regulations and policies I had in the office. They weren't necessarily about – there was nothing about my dentistry ever. I never got a bad review about my dentistry. Um, I was a fee-for-service practice. I wanted to get paid. But I also have – I tend to be very direct with patients, and a lot of patients don't like my directness. Yeah. So most of the reviews I had gotten were because of my my attitude – my, my, my rules. Um, and I accepted them. I, I think I got one or two fake reviews that were never of a patient, but I, I owned my reviews. I owned my negative reviews and I, I just overwhelmed them with so many positives that look, when you get it, it hurts, but it, it wasn't the end of the world in my mind. And that's what I've taught forever um, is, is just don't let it get it affect you. Um, I've had dentists reach out to me that it literally was like the end of the world for them. And yeah. um, I, I told them that, you know, Take a couple of days, relax. Um, maybe a, a patient will will give you a positive review, which will change your outlook completely. Uh, but you can't let these things affect you. It isn't the end of the business if you get a bad review. Simple as that. Yeah. yeah. Now I know that I, I believe you work with um, uh, Birdeye, and you you uh, partner with them. There's many platforms out there that can help you with the tech side of getting um, uh, reviews from varying price points to varying features. Um, I, I think. You know, there's, like I said, there's plenty of great platforms out there, but one thing that I know and that recommending technology is a good, a good place to start, right? So using some type of tech to help you with that, that is absolutely critical. But some doctors really struggle with still asking for reviews. It's nice to have software be able to do it for you. And I endorse that. Um, but also doctors that are really good about asking their patients for reviews, the technology is 10 times, right? So it'll, it'll really help them blow up. And this is where you can see a practice go from, you know, four reviews to 250 reviews in a year, it really takes a doctor involved. What do you say to those who are afraid to ask for reviews, don't feel right about it or think that it's awkward? How do you, how do you change that? Well, that's a very common thing I get too, is I feel awkward asking and we're not in the, put in the position normally to do that. So the first thing I always like to say is don't ask for a review, ask for feedback about the patient experience. It sure. changes the conversation you have with them. When your team or you ask for a review, it actually sounds like you're begging for it, the way it comes out. But if you tell a patient that you're looking for some feedback about the experience in the, in the practice, they're more apt to do it. It's a very comfortable conversation. Nobody has a, in a difficult time asking for that. Um, as you mentioned, um, asking a patient um, is, is kind of the norm. Unfortunately, when you ask, you're lucky if you get it 5% of the time because it's a long process. So I do feel whether you use BirdEye and I run their dental division, I've been with them for nine years. Um, we're the leaders in the dental industry by, by far. Um, or you use one of my competitors and, you know, there are a number of them out there. You have to use something that makes it easy for your patients to do it. Sure. Um, just just sending a link in a text message or an email, you may think it's easy, but it's not because it requires the patients to do so many things. You have to make it easy as long as, as well as you having a conversation with the patient about it. Setting it up on automation, automation works. When you take the time in the office to discuss it with the patient, it maybe incentivize the team, you blow it up even more. Yeah, hundred percent. That's. I mean, I think it's a big difference when, when I when I tell doctors, and I think that's a, a better way that you phrase it than I, I typically would. That you say, "Hey, ask for feedback, not reviews." That is a that is a smarter way of phrasing that. Everyone on the show should adopt that. Uh, listening should adopt that. But when you ask for that uh, feedback, when I when I tell dentists to do that, and they say, "Well, I don't feel I don't like doing that," my response to them always is like, "Well, you don't like money, right?" Um, because reviews is is a game changer as far as finances in a practice. Do you agree with that? A uh, huge, huge game changer. The way I refer yeah. to it as is the reviews that you're getting will also unlock the key or, or, or be the few that allows the marketing engine to burn and do really well. The return on investment is so much higher when a practice has reviews beneath it and to power that. For a practice that has 10 reviews online and they want to spend thousands of dollars on marketing, it does zero for that marketing plan. When you're in the 100, 150, 200 and above, you can do almost any marketing and it will be successful simply because you have the reputation to support it. That's right, 100%, couldn't agree with you more. It'll increase 
your return on investment from Google ads to Facebook ads to direct mail, it doesn't matter what it is. It's going to increase the ROI significantly. Um, let me ask you this. We normally start with this. Tell me, how did you become a dentist? What made you want to become a dentist in the first place? My dad was a dentist. Um, he set up shop. He had two offices, uh, one in New York City and one in the home I grew up in. And I would venture down to hit the lower level, which I call the basement. But when <laughs> he wouldn't like me to call it the basement, it was the lower level of the house. And uh, sure. he saw patients in there. And I would venture down and I would watch him transforms, transform the smiles of, of his patients. And my dad was a very excellent clinician. And um, basically, um, I thought I was going to be a lawyer. Um, that was my goal. And I still remember the day I made the decision to, to go into dentistry is I was sitting watching TV in my house in New Orleans at Tulane University. In, in, it would have been in 1992 or 1993. And I was watching headline news. And there was a fun fact that came up that said in the year 2025, there'll be 500% more lawyers than there are now. And I just had a feeling that law was not something I was going to enjoy. Um, and I said, you know what? I, I think I want to be a dentist. And and, um, yeah. But it was all because of my dad. My dad was a, a big mentor of mine. We did, never got a chance to work together because he developed cancer before I actually got out of uh, of college and had to sell his New York practice, which would have been earmarked for me. Um, and then I ended up in Philadelphia anyway. But, um, but no, I, I chose to be a dentist because of my dad. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Dr. Lentau, the website, I'm going to spell it out a little uh, for our audiences, Dr. D-R-L-E-N-T-A-U.com. As the review doctor, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.